Okay, so uh, Danielle is our next speaker. Um, Danielle has uh, been both coding and making art for 20 years, which sounds amazing, actually. <laughs> um, starting with basic and pencils, now presuming basic as in the old school spectrum style language. Yeah. Wicked. Um, Danielle studied engineering and fine art in university uh, and loves working in spaces where logic and expression mix. Uh, for the last 10 years, uh, she's worked primarily as a front end developer um, with phrases into other areas, working on projects running from McDonald's.ie <laughs> um, and uh, touchscreen interactives for the National Gallery of Ireland. Yeah. Sounds amazing. <laughs> so, if everyone could please uh, give a round of applause for that. to work on a project for the Welcome Fest called 15 Seconds Part 3. It was presenting the work of the artist Chris Dolan Brown, who filmed a series of participants at intervals of 10 years, starting in 1994. Um, together, the films produce a really moving series of portraits that address um, growing up, forwarded ambition, and finding out what makes you happy in life. So building this project was immensely fun and rewarding and in the process I learned something really important, which is don't let your job title get you down. We should let our titles limit what we're willing to take on because there are many benefits to stretching ourselves. The first one obviously is that we can improve our skills. We all have areas where we excel and areas where we need to improve. We have things we're curious about like the latest techniques and frameworks. So taking on projects outside our usual domains means that we can learn and we can develop informed opinions. Another benefit I found was increased respect for other people's fields. So I'm not suggesting that anyone could come along and do someone else's job, far from it, but with the right project, stepping just outside our usual boundaries can highlight the challenges and the skills required for their fields and it can greatly improve the respect that we have for them. I also discovered that it leads to improved collaboration, so increased understanding of the constraints and decisions that other people make in their fields means that we can communicate more fluently across disciplines. So initially, I was a little bit reluctant to take this project on. <laughs> it was a bit daunting, but it was also so interesting and rewarding, and I realized that I had a lot of resources to call on if I needed help. So I have to spend a lot of time outside my areas of expertise. Um, there are some specific challenges I outside in all circumstances. There were some atypical interactions and what if all these journeys weren't considered? I didn't know I'm not the expert. So what did I do? I tried my best and I tried to do what I thought UX might do. I spent some couple of days brainstorming, researching and consulting. And finally I decided to build a quick little prototype with Meteor that resolved some of these questions. So what did I gain from this? Well I learned a lot about the UX process and obviously working with Meteor I've gained an informed opinion about it. <laughs> and crucially I gained an appreciation for the pressure that UX um, UXers experience at the front line between meeting client needs and user needs. Um, and then the next challenge I faced was with design. So the brief specified a minimal UI with a high vis on black mirror aesthetic. Um, my design chops are a bit rusty, so my confidence was a little low, and um, there were some very specific constraints that I had to consider. So again, I did my best. I spent some time researching, did some mock-ups, I viewed a lot of source material from Chris, and I actually had a lot of good luck as well because we had kind of compatible aesthetic senses. So I gained a lot of respect for the difficulty that designers face when they have to address the needs of both code and of design. Sometimes it can be in direct conflict. Um, I also um, learned a lot about maintaining consistency across designs and how much difficult that is. I won't complain about that anymore <laughs> if that doesn't come down here. Um, so hopefully that's made me a much better collaborator. So 
in the front end, I faced some challenges as well. Um, first of all, does it need a framework? Does it make sense here? Um, what kind of problems will I face trying to see three different videos playing simultaneously? Um, and also, progressive enhancement was absolutely essential. So what kind of challenges would I face in this particular scenario? So I did, again, lots more research, trial and error, testing, iteration. And in this case, I gained lots of knowledge about the video API, um, specifically its limitations across browsers and OSs. <laughs> and, um, I also developed a new workflow for progressive enhancement, which I was able to use across other projects. So that helped me out with my collaboration again. And in summary, I just want to say that uh, you should be brave. You should step outside your boundaries so that you can learn, collaborate, and have respect. <laughs>